classification and the basic principles involved in counting. Okay, so let us get start off with. First of all, why why is this chapter useful? Where is it used? So it is the most ever important chapter in mathematics anywhere you will find it. You take any exam after your graduation or before the graduation, like this counting chapter will be there right from the 12th standard CET exam, JEE exam, GATE exam, exam after the graduation. If you are planning GRE, if you are planning to do MBA GATE exam, everywhere you will find this uh, concepts of counting very useful. It will be used in every field of mathematics and it is the most essential important chapter. Not only in the entrance exams, even if you are want a training, uh, even if you want to have a, some placement, campus placement, always you will find questions on counting. So why is this counting very important? It is the very fundamental thing in computer science. Counting has its lots of application because we need to have some counting basically provides us estimate of the various things, which is the must for the business applications. So in that way, it is the most essential and the you will you will never get relief from this wherever you go. This will come along with you. So remember, it is there are very few concepts in this chapter, but you need to understand the concepts very well in order to get any question correctly. Otherwise, the chances I have seen many, according to my experience and teaching experience so far, I know the students find this chapter the most difficult one in terms of success rate. And the reason behind this is quite, uh, is only one thing that it is very conceptual chapter. It is not that you have lots of formulas and you just use the formula and substitute the values. You need to understand what formula you are using. Why are you using that? What is the concept behind it? It is a very, I am again repeating and I am again stressing on that, that this is the most ever conceptual chapter you will ever see and it is very important to get this correctly. So we will be totally be stressing on what the concepts are and how to make use of those concepts and derive the results. So remember one thing, now we are going to start with this basic principles of counting and believe me, Whatever entire chapter, entire this counting, probability, permutation, combination is all based on derived on basis of this. There is nothing more than this. Once you get this correctly, this entire chapter is follow up of every this of this thing. Once you get this things correctly, you become the king. You know, you have all the power with you. But this you should be able to understand what is its meaning and how is it used, where will it be used. You need to understand this very clearly. So in that we, we, we will see the most important thing of the mathematics, the basic principles of counting. So let us start off with that. So there are two main basic principles, one, of, one is of addition and one is of multiplication. So the thing goes in this way, imagine that you have one job to be done okay. and there are p alternatives with you to do that job and you have another job to be done which is independent of the first job and there are q base or q alternatives in which you can do it. For example, let us take a simple example. Here is place A. The job one is to go to place B from A to B. Okay. And I say that there are three ways available with me. I can go from A to B via bus, train, or auto. So these are the three possible ways in which I can go from A to B. And similarly, there are, let's say, Two possible ways in which I can go from A to C. I can use auto and I can use let's say taxi. Okay? So this is one job which is to be done, like going from A to B. And going from A to C is another job. Now we are both the jobs are independent of each other. It is not that it is dependent on each other. So the statement is very clearly you have to understood. Understand. If one job can be done in P number of ways. And there is a second independent job which can be done in Q ways. Then, with this, what this basic principle of addition answer is that the number of ways in which you can do job 1 or job 2 
it is or job 1 or job 2 is p plus q so this is the main two thing or gets means addition this is what the basic principle of addition implies to us ok so the number of ways in which job 1 or job 2 can be done is equal to p plus q which is 5 in this case and why is it so if I ask you how many ways can you go from A to B or C that means what either you are going to B or you are going to C you are never going to B and C both the places that means you are leaving the place A you are not sure where you are leaving here. either you will leave towards B or you may leave towards C if you leave towards B you have three options available with you and if you go towards C you have two options available with you so in total I will say that I have five options with me I can go from A to B via bus, I can go from A to B via train, I can go from A to B using auto or I can go from A to C by using auto or I can go from A to C by using taxi. So I have five number of options available with me in this example. That is what is the basic principle of addition. This is the most important thing. Whenever you have a choice, that is you have to do this or this. You have to do one job or second job then the number of ways in which it can be done is equal to p plus q which is the addition of the two ok so let me just erase it off now let us see the basic principle of multiplication let us take one similar type of example The statement is same. If one job can be done in p number of ways and the second job can independently be done in q number of ways, so what this basic principle of multiplication answer is that the number of ways in which job 1 and job 2, I am using the word and the number of ways in which job 1 and job 2 task 1 and task 2 can be done is p multiplied by q that is and gets transformed to multiplication this is the most important thing everywhere it will be used so the number of ways in which job 1 and job 2 can be done is p multiplied by q again let us take a simple example and understand it from the basic intuition that we have Suppose I am at place A. From place A to place B I can go by two ways. By bus and by auto. And from B to C I can go in three number of ways. By using taxi or by you know by walking or by cycle. So now the question is that I want to go from A to C. If, if I ask what is the number of ways in which I can go from A to C. So to my dear if I want to go from A to C I have to first go to from A to B and then I have to go from B to C. So it is essentially the word and. So if I want to go from A to C, it is I want to go from A to B and then I want to go from B to C. Okay. So the number of ways to go from A to B are 2 and the number of ways to go from B to C are 3. So the total number of ways to go from A to C will be 6. Let us see how it is 6 in this case. Let us consider this thing that uh, suppose if I go from A to B by bus then I have three options to go from B to C I can go by train, I can go walking or I can go by cycle so these are three options if I go from A to B by bus similarly if I go from A to B by auto similarly I will have three options to go from B to C again by using taxi, by walking or by using cycle so if you see the total I will have six number of ways three number of days for each entry here so if there are m and t entries here then there are q entries here I will have q options for each one entry here so total options will be p multiplied by 
cube. Now you may think that this is very simple thing, it looks quite obvious. But one underlying thing is that the two events must be independent of each other. And we will see how this simple thing can be used to solve lots of lots of lots of examples with practical implementation as well. But this is the main thing that we need to remember, which I covered that there are two main principles in mathematics regarding counting. One is of addition and one is of multiplication. So the addition principle says that if you can do one job in this x number of ways, another job in y number of ways, the number of ways of doing job 1 or job 2 is x plus y. So all gets transformed into addition. Similarly, multiplication says that and where you have to do both the things gets transformed into multiplication. Okay. Now this is similar to like saying all this has all these chapters of mathematics are very much related, like logic. In logic, this becomes the union bit and this becomes intersection. Similarly, in log digital logic or in uh, set theory, set theory this becomes union and this becomes intersection. So all this thing of counting is can be transformed from one field of mathematics to another field of mathematics. This is very important. Okay, so with this, let us see some example. Because this chapter can be best be understood and best be solved only if you have numerous, uh, if you if you do lots of lots and lots of practice. This chapter, this is the one chapter which needs lots of practice and patience to solve the questions. So we will solve many questions, but the thing is that when I will write a question, you pause the video and try to think on yourself what the answer can be, and then you can switch on and find out whether your answer is correct or not. Okay? So we now start with some basic type of questions. <coughs> 